today we're going to be looking at the if statement in Ruby. Um, Java and Ruby have an if statement, yeah, and they're very similar, but the syntax is more in Java um, than in Ruby. Ruby is very simple and straightforward. And I, w I will open up um, the Ruby Interactive just to, just to demonstrate this. It's basically just an if match your if statement so so the conditional root and you can branch from it with different directions within an if statement called different called different conditions um, and so after the if you've got a condition so and what you're looking for is true so if this condition is true do this and if it's false do not do this okay and so we know this one is true so after the if statement we're going to have a piece of code or a block of a block, a block of code that's going to be executed and so we're going to do something simple yeah. and it finishes the if statement finishes with an end and so Charles was printed because it was true but if it was false True. And right, we've got the nil because there was no errors in the code, but it's not done anything. It's not executed this code um, because it was false, um, and because this expression was false, not true, and so. There's another way of doing it in, in Ruby. You can uh, you can add the then um, keyword at the end of it. So one equals one then, and it makes it more readable. Uh, if someone can say if such and such happens, then something something's going to happen. Um, so we do not need to put this into the code. That's just and then it would be like. It's going to be true, so I right, man. It's going to be this. This code is going to be executed. See, and so, so it's just as simple as that, and as simple as that, and you can add this keyword in if you want to. Now. What you, what you can do is that you can put an expression and if it's true you want to do something but if it's not true, if it's false, you want to do something different which is branching your code into different directions under certain conditions and there's a, a keyword that comes after the after the if statement called else and so the else behaves in a way that code after else will be executed if the condition was false. So if one um, equal to two, which is false, put this to screen. And instead of finishing the, the, the condition off with the end, you've got the keyword else. Now what else is, is going to do is we're going to put code here that will be executed if the original condition is false, which it is false. Right, just to show you. And now you'd put an end. And just to show you has been, has been um, put onto the screen because the original condition was false and Charles was not put on the screen. Now there's a if else, this if one equal five which is false again. This equal to five is false again. Right, and so we just need to put something in here. It's not going to get executed. What we have here is a else if 
and it's another if it's another if um, statement with a condition. So if the first one's false, then it goes to the second one and tests a completely different condition. So if one is equal to four. If I put put S here, so I don't know that this is going to fail because of that. Yeah. Else if, and, and I'm going to put a condition that which is true, and we're going to put S. Right on, so it worked even though I made a mistake there because it didn't go into the, the if statement 1 is equal to 5, um, it didn't show up as an error, it just went to the one that was correct, which is 3 is equal to 3, and, and put all the code put, put as right on. So so that's that's how that works with if else statements, and you can have a whole list of them. It's similar to a case statement, but we'll cover case statements later on. Th this is say, an if statement in, in Java. You can see that it's the same, but it's actually got more syntax to it. The 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 condition to be tested is in brackets, and then it's an else statement. So it's basically the same. And so what I've done here is said two is greater than one, which is true. So it's present. Um, system dot alt dot print equals to is greater than one. It's going to get printed out. So two is greater than one. So, but if we change it to a false statement, two is greater than three. That's not true. So it's false. So if and uh, if we save and then run the code, two is not greater than three. So you can see that that's a condition and we've branched to different codes to determine whether this, this statement is true or false. And the same in, in the, the Ruby program is that we've got if sub equal to sub which is true, um, this code here is going to get executed. And what we've done is hello man dot new set the set method and set that variable to 25 and then then we're, we're going to the get method and the 25 we're going to take it from that variable put it onto this variable and then print that variable to the screen which is 25 now if that condition is false we're going to go to this class in my world class um, and go into the char method which is going to pr print out my world, my world's okay too. And so make sure it's saved with the DOS prompt. Hello, world. Dot happy. You can see it's printed out to twenty five because this condition is true. So this block of code got executed, but if it was not true. 7 is equal to 3? I don't think so. Okay, so this one here is going to get it. So if I save, and my world's okay too. So, so that's an if statement and how you can use it. So I'm going to take this code away. created a string called s. Right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say s is equal to two is greater two is greater than one. Right, and then question mark and I'm going to do a string and I'm going to say 
right and after the string I'm going to put a colon then I'm going to do a string and I'm going to say wrong and then I need a semicolon after it so so what, I, what, I'm, what I'm attempting to do is sign if, the, if this statement is true the string right right is going to go into S and if it's false wrong is going to go into S right and then I'm going to print system dot alt dot print ln and I'm going to print alt So it's going to say condition is true or false. Yeah. Save. Run the code. Yeah, yeah it is working, it's condition is right and so make that to null it's null it's false condition is wrong so it's working but I think what was wrong the first time is you should have should have bra bracket brackets um, and this condition makes it easier for Jaffa condition is right and if I make it a free and it's up wrong it's, it's false again so if I run the code condition is wrong so you can see that's just like an if statement um, and that's called a conditional operator and it's easier to type than an if statement um, a question mark is if the condition is true do this and the code on this if the condition is not true, do this. So it's quite straightforward once you get used to it. And it's the same it's the same in it's the same in, in Ruby. Um, if I do right, one is equal to one question mark um, colon It's chosen Charles um, because it's true, um, and if I pr I've never put the screen false, and so if I do, if I do one is equal to three, which is false, and if I do, if I do true, then the colon, and if I do false. it's going to print false yeah and if I make the condition if I make the condition true again it's true and then false false it's going to So you can see that it's just like an if statement, um, but the uh, syntax is much more simple. So, so that's if statements in Ruby. So, so again, thank you for your time and, and thank you for the.